In modern day America, the corporations run our lives. But one man is prepared to take our country back. This summer, meet a superhero like no other. Pooda Tang's one bad brother, man. Pooda Tang whipped your butt so bad that you can write it off on your taxes. Side I take. Since the inception of Pooda Tang's ad campaign, sales are down 30%. He steals from me. I want him dead. Dead, dead, Pooda! Paramount Pictures presents, in association with MTV Films and Chris Rock Productions. We got Pootie Tang in the house tonight. A man too cool for words. So let's listen up to the new record by Pootie Tang. Turn that noise down! Pootie don't need no words, don't even need no music. You could set my body up. Ladies, you skinny, wonderful man. Lance Crowther. Wanda Sykes. Give me some more of your juicy neck bone one more time. And Chris Rock. Daddy? You damn right I'm your daddy. Pootie Tag. You are oh, funny, man. Side I take. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Movie Umpers. My name is Bob Sham. My name is Angela. Uh, all month long, we're talking about floppy comedies. We're re-examining after many years to see how they hold up today. Are they worth re-examining? Are they as bad as people said they were then? Some are, some aren't. We're calling it Awkward Laughter to the Flop. Today's discussion is one that is uh, a a parody. It's spun out of the Chris Rock show. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and it is a parody of the old black exploitation action movies from the seventies, and it's also a lot like those movies in the fact that the leads are black, but the directors and writers are often <laughs> white. Yeah. Uh, that being, this movie is written and directed an early project by maybe you've heard of this guy, Angela. People have told me I look like this guy. I kind of do, right? Like I kind of, I kind of do look a little bit like him, right? Louis C.K., written and directed. This is a guy we followed for a while. Yeah, we did. We did. Before we knew he was a creep. You know, I want to get specific with these creeps because this is Louis. I don't, I wouldn't put him in the rankings of a, uh, you know, I think even then we've discussed creators who are worse. Oh, yeah. Truly. And sometimes, and it may be a cold way to look at the whole thing, but, you know, reflecting on the Me Too movement. The thing that I have weird objective fascinations for when dealing with certain characters that kind of, um, some would say canceled. Louis uh, said he did lose significant sums of money because series and stuff fell off. But he's kind of never, but he eventually he came back to stand up and he can still sell out Madison Square Garden. He can still play those kind of venues. Yeah. So while it probably was a shock to his career, it seems like he... Still has a lot of respectability amongst colleagues and in the business to not be totally gone and still a lot of established fan base out there. I see when I see him on interviews and shit, it seems like he's not as funny as he used to be, uh, but almost like he's trying to be a little more sagely about like his co- comedy ness or something. Mm. That's kind of the vibe I get from him from current Louis C.K. Based on the clips, the brief clips of him when he was appearing on podcasts that show up in my feed. Looking at, like, the things he's accused of beating off in front of uh, female comedians, you get, like, varying accounts. Some accounts where he's, like, asking to do it, and some say yes or no. Apparently, Sarah Silverman was like, yeah, sure, and <laughs> other women. But it's, it's hard to tell um, what's happening at what time. But there are some accounts where it's, like, it seems like he's asking and then other accounts, it seems like the detail is limited, almost implying that he's just like, ha here's my dick. Like a guy on a subway. Mm-hmm. He's like a flasher. I mean, yeah, he is. Truly, that is kind of like his kink, right? Yeah. I mean, we know, like, say, for example, Bill Cosby is a rapist. 
there's something weird about it. Like, it's not like, like he wants them to be asleep so he can have that control over them. And then, and a lot of people will excuse the Cosby stuff in this. It's like, well, they came in and they wanted, well, they didn't want to be like completely unconscious and then wake up having no idea what happened. And you don't know what they wanted. They wanted to, ha- they wanted to spend time with him. That doesn't mean they wanted well, I, him to fuck I them. I think the implication that they're saying is that when Cosby is trying to be extramarital in his affairs mm. that maybe some women walk in and are like, well, this is Bill Cosby, right? I'll probably sleep with him. But I'm not yeah. excusing the fact that they're getting knocked out and suddenly they're waking up yeah, after taking no... allergy medicine. I'm yeah. trying to say that that rationing doesn't excuse that. And that is worse than what Louis C.K. Absolutely. did. Louis C.K., fascinating to me, in that he is like a, a street creep. He's the guy, that stereotypical guy that was like, is the flasher practically part right? of it is the shock yeah part like, of it is the surprise like he gets, what is the woman gonna do when she finds out well I, i'm just curious is like what goes to your head what uh contributes to that what exactly is making you hard right i think part of it is doing something bad i mean i i heard a story once and I, listen i don't know how true this is but that it was more like he was sitting behind a desk jacking off while he was talking to a woman and then she figured out what was happening. Yeah, I've That heard, is more of a, am I going to get caught, there, I think. There are accusations that people have realized he was doing something to himself while they were talking over a phone mm-hmm. or something. Women, I guess, will encounter that with weird men sometimes. Yeah. But it's just so strange. Like, Louis is like, uh, well, he is a, a good comedian. Like, I can't say that what he's put out in his output has been bad i think that would be that would be bullshit if you laugh then you laugh then absolutely but i do think that this having come out drastically changed the trajectory of his career because he it felt like he was going up and up and up and not everything was a total hit but it seemed like he was in a place where if he had the right idea someone would probably give him the money and he could have did a, like a huge movie or something. He had some movie that he wrote and direct. I don't even know if it ever got officially released because it was set to come out right when all this popped mm. off and he, a lot of studios and projects were pulled. Like a movie uh, about where John Malkovic is dating uh, his character's daughter. China wants to come and live with me for the rest of her senior year. Of course she wants to come live with you. You have a giant apartment and you have the Hamptons and the plane. None of that is my fault. You divorced me while I was a loser, so you lost. I'm always a little curious about that movie, but apparently it just never officially came out. Mm -hmm. Have you thought at all about what you're going to do with your life? I don't know, Daddy. We'll, We'll talk about it, okay? Okay, I love you. I love you. I wonder if it's out there somewhere. What format? From what I heard, he's just kind of ripping off Woody Allen in the movie. That's what that sounded like. Is that your girlfriend? Oh, God. No, that's my daughter, China. <laughs> oh, wow. She's gorgeous. Uh, I mean, the, that, that description does kind of sound like some Woody Allen-esque it kind of bit. Absolutely does. And if he's just trying to do a Woody Allen, then I don't, I don't know. It doesn't sound very good anyway. And honestly, this movie that he directed, you know, the characters in this movie are fun. Yeah. I get the tone, and I'm not against that at all. I think uh, a lot of the actors involved are fun. I like these players. The decisions in the movie and the way it's paced, Louis said himself that one of the producers, Caldecott Chubb, yeah, that is a uh, name of the producer, and Ali Leroy essentially took uh, the movie away from him by the time it was shot and it was time to go into the editing. There's another, uh, we're going to talk about this next week with Run, Ronnie, Run, Yes, but politics on the editing room floor. And movies can be made or broken in the editing room. Yeah. There are some scenes where it seemed like, man, you really probably should have reshot that. Yeah. Some of the actors, you know, I mean, you get this with comedies. Like, not every moment is some great actor's moment. Some things are just trying to, like, force towards a joke. But if someone stutters through their line, you should probably reshoot, reshoot that. it if that's not their character. So, according to CK, uh, Ali Leroy, I mean, the credited uh, editors are Doug Abel and David Lewis Smith. And it happens all the time that there are people involved in that process that aren't formally credited. That happens all the time. Calling the Uh, shots. Yeah. And Ali Leroy, uh, according to CK, uh, basically took this from him in the editing room. So Louis didn't have any input in the editing room. In that respect, I don't know. um, I wouldn't say it's a great directed movie. But Louis is basically saying this is far from what he envisioned it would be. and But in the reality, just looking at the editing and how the jokes are cut around, 
sometimes there are like these weird scenes where they're making this humor, but it almost like lingers like one second too long. Yes. And the way people are positioned too, and that's on the director, is like really strange. That is on the director. But in reality, it does, this is probably one of the worst edited movies we've talked about like ever in terms of yes. just the pacing and the execution. Yes. The way it was cut kind of fucks with a lot of the timing of the humor. It, yeah, it feels like something's off. Oh, you haven't even said the name of the movie yet. Oh, I guess we should say sure. it. Sure. Pootie Tang from Pootie 2001, Tang. directed by Louis C.K., based on a, a, a Chris Rock show character. What happened? to you down by the cutting star. I was just down there, you know, tying in a cloud. Really, really, really? Because everybody said you was crying on the Tammy. <laughs> no, my Damien. That's a water tie to the salmon cow. <laughs> well, if you say so, Pooty. In which Louis C.K. wrote for that show, and it's starring Lance Crother, J.B. Smoove, Wanda Sykes, Jennifer Coolidge, Chris Rock, and plenty more. Wanda Sykes As, uh, stole this whole goddamn movie. Biggie Shorty? I, ge I guess. No, I thought she was wonderful. I actually I mean, loved All the characters the are fine. I don't I didn't really feel like anyone was like stepping up that much. She was the only one that I got excited when she was on the screen. Like yeah. I was like, "Ooh, Wanda." Like and Biggie Shorty is funny to me because she is this woman who just is like dressed to the nines just dancing to her own headphones on the street constantly. And I kind of liked when those went a little too long. Because to me, that was like interesting. She's interesting. I don't know. I liked it. I liked we when the car pulled up to try to pick her up. Just because a girl like to dress fancy and stand on the street corner near some whores, you automatically think she's hooking? Wouldn't you? <laughs> I, I would. I'm a lady, you, you greasy bastard. I like it. I thought she was great. But her character is funny in the sense that she looks like she's she would be a prostitute in a movie, but she's actually this just this fun person who likes to hang out and she likes Pootie Tang. And Pootie Tang himself is like a hero, almost like a superhero. Mm -hmm. This guy who maybe one of the more pure, most moral and protagonists we've ever discussed Absolutely. in a movie. He wants to help the neighborhood, help the kids, and he's against like corporatism and shit like that. You kind of do Get behind Pootie Tang, even if at most some of the time you don't believe in this movie. Pootie yeah. Tang's kind of like Jesus. Yeah. He actually really is kind of like Jesus. He's telling kids not to eat fast food and drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes and eat healthy food like carrots and vegetables. and. Yeah, he's like you know. genuinely good in the community. There is a weird part at the beginning where it talks that he's like been a player since he was a child and there's like a grown ass woman like throwing his like tricycle out the window. It's hilarious, but it's also like what are we implying right now? Is Pooty fucking is a child Pooty fucking these grown women or are they just so into the orbit of the charm of Pooty? I guess thing? it's just I actually thought that something crazy was going to happen like he was going to be a virgin. Because I thought that, like, women would be his downfall. And a woman was, you know, like, kind of got him off course. But I really thought it... Because he kind of pushes away a lot of women. Yeah. And I thought that was going to be part of it was that he's such a fucking player, but he's never... Well, there's, like, That might have been interesting. There's, like, a dialogue premonition of saying that uh, J.B. Smoove narrates the movie. Mm -hmm. And also plays one of his best Trucky. friends. And he's and he's like, uh, Pootie's weakness is hoes, mm -hmm. and it's but we saw him like like decline a hoe and leave her like a bowl of milk uh, out in the like we see him have like control. Well, and he and and you know in the narration, Trucky actually says, "Whoa, she's fine. Why did Pootie pass that up? Cause she's crazy. Look at her licking milk out of a bowl." <laughs> But then he did say, but what Pootie cannot handle is like a legit hoe. Enter Jennifer Coolidge. So, but she's she comes off completely crazy as well. Oh, hey, I need to, damn, I need to get your name. Get up. Oh, 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 damn, do, do I know you? Uh, uh, you want me to pull your legs off? Uh, pull me? You want me to make out? Uh, I, I might enjoy that. I know, and violent? Also, Jennifer, she's like biting JB Smooth's ear. Jennifer Coolidge, she's kind of always going to be like a babe, right? She's oh, always. 
I always think has, always will. She be. has eternal babe. Like she's always played up goofy as the older sultry woman, but she really is kind of hot, right? She is hot, and she, she really does. She I mean, kinda, that's why you see her in her little character role. She does embody that. I think she the transcends. I think she transcends type. Yeah. Also, like I feel like everyone is attracted to her. It doesn't matter if and that's she, who you might be attracted to normally. And she's genuinely funny, like yes. good, good verbal timing and shit like that. So funny. She knows her lane for sure. Regardless of my criticisms of this movie, I do like Pootie Tang as a character. So Absolutely. There is something about that alone. The characters themselves are actually all quite enjoyable. Not having ever seen the Chris Rock show, I was not familiar with the skit or Pootie Tang or anything. And I knew this was a thing and I thought he was a superhero. So, and like you said, he kind of is like an everyman superhero. Uh, cause he can beat anybody up with his magic belt. Yeah. That his dad gave him cause he whipped his ass all the time. Yeah. But it's really just confidence. It's not really the belt. Mm. It's just confidence. Yeah. I do get, I get the whole, like he's too cool for words. And after a while, there are certain like phrases that you knew what they meant. You know, but every so often... I never knew. Well, no, because he would call people... There were certain phrases he would say, like, Wadate is, like, Sadate. positive, affirmative, that he says over and over again. And he calls his friends, like, oh, hammies or something. We, he makes up a lot of words. The joke is that they know what he's saying and we don't. Booty Tang has a message for the children of America. So you better walk a call to the family, because the Cammy Town's a pity on the panty stop. Pootie says, cigarettes and fast food burgers are bad like a net attack. And don't drink malt liquor, cause you don't need to, cause you're okay. Sadate. Also, eat all your vegetables, and don't bang the dilly. So, you think you know what he's saying. But don't really. It is absolute nonsense. I mean, it obviously is. I mean, there are some things he says over and over again, so it's almost like a catchphrase. That's what I mean. Like, you kind of... That you could associate with his victory or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, it, but but I found myself wanting to try to decipher him, yeah. and I know I couldn't, but I was trying. I was like, okay, I think I know what that means. So, that alone is a pretty good joke. Yeah. It's like, fake... <laughs> Fake lingo that that everyone understands, but the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, the originally this title was set. This movie and it is called that within the movie because it's bookended with Bob Costas interviewing Pootie yes. Tang. And after the story is done and it goes to the end of the interview, it really is kind of funny. Where Bob Costas is like, "That is the longest movie clip we've ever played for the show." But originally, this movie was supposed to be called Pootie Tang and Sign Your Pity on the Runny Kind. Sign, you gotta say it slower. Sign your pity on the runny kine. So it's called that within the movie, the movie, the show within the show. And apparently they wanted to call that as well for the release. Well, it's a good, it's a good thing that they went with Pootie <laughs> Tang. Yeah, it kind of, I would, would be willing to bet that they expected that to happen. Like they're going to present that, but they know the studio is going to be like, let's just call it Pootie Tang. So Jennifer Coolidge successfully uh, seduces Pootie Tang into signing his likeness and image over to this corrupt le lector corporation that uh, is all about like feeding kids fast food and getting them addicted to shit. And so they sell matches and alcohol. So just like in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the classic <laughs> uh, movie from like 89 or 90, uh, Pootie Tang has to go to a farm to find himself. And much like how the Ninja Turtles were looking at the spirit of uh, their their father figure, Master Splinter, even though they saw his spirit, but he's not dead. He wasn't dead. And he talked po to them, but didn't tell him where he was. Pootie Tank talks to his late father, who appears as a stalk of corn. Now, obviously, this movie is goofy as hell on purpose. Yes, um, his mother also appears as a cow. Pootie, you're a good man. I'm proud of you. Yeah. That might be the way they were. That's the one thing where I, I complain about how they were positioned. And yeah, shit. it was weird. But the joke in and of itself was pretty good. And this is the whole movie. Mm -hmm. The joke's not bad. Could see them be decent jokes. Yeah, there's there's this whole running gag between, like, Chris Rock plays multiple characters. He's one of his gang dudes as well, or his homies. Your homies, yeah. And there's, like, a third guy, right? But there's this whole thing between, like, Chris Rock, and then there's this guy that just repeats everything they say. 
But even that felt weird sometimes. Yeah. I was like, what is happening with this? Like, because Chris Rock is like going, going, going. And then this guy like says something and it just like falls flat. That character f- felt like a, a like a bad re- uh, repeated character in an SNL episode an hour into the show or something. Yeah, right? it just wasn't done well. Yeah, just, yeah. That guy should have had something going on. If he should have been high or he should have been not paying attention, something well, he can't could be have high. Been... Pooty, Pooty keeps it straight edge. Oh, right. Pooty's a straight edge. He doesn't even want the kids eating fast food. That's a pretty good message. It is. I'm not a believer of any religion, specifically the Bible, the one I grew up with, but I respect Jesus Christ. So, and Pootie is Jesus Christ, right? Or at least the idea, what he represents and can represent. Pootie's like that. Yeah, I'm kind of criticizing this movie, but he's also my Jesus at the same time. If that <laughs> if that makes any sense whatsoever. But yes, um, Pootie Tang. And Pootie Tang does, gets inspired by the ghost of his father dressed as corn to go and take back his image and his likeness. By, uh, oh, and there's also these, like, vil- like he's got, like, these Dick Tracy-like vil- villains. Yeah. Where it's, like, Dirty D, who the guy who's obsessed with dirt, covering himself in dirt. And a guy that's just called Froggy, who looks like the little rascal, like, grown up. Yeah. I think that's ex- ex- essentially what the joke is. He's the grown-up little rascal who's gone bad or some shit. But, yeah, but he does fight off the evil corporation. David Crop, the corporation has... Put David Cross in blackface, and they're having him represent Pootie Tang, and but he but Pootie Tang defeats them all, and uh, he goes forward, and he and he still stands up, and he ends up being with uh, Biggie Shorty, who yes. pined for him through the whole movie. They get married at the end, but that is the movie Pootie Tang, directed by Louis C.K. Tang Tang from two thousand one. Are you going to give one through five? Are you going to give one through five combined for best out of ten? What do you give Pootie Tang? 2.25. I'll go down the middle. Um, the, uh, I think it does hit enough. It's kind of more scr- screwball, kind of like the awkward laughter we watched last year. Mm-hmm. It feels, uh, so I kind of, you know, lean into that. But yeah, I'm, I may be being too kind because I, I mean it when I say this may be one of the worst edited movies we've ever discussed for the show. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not. I can't go straight down the middle. Yeah, that's too complimentary. Mm -hmm. Um, The fact that it's not under a two is only because of the characters themselves. Absolutely, one hundred. I would. Yeah, but there are other aspects of it. The execution is not good. No, it just is not. So we're both going to give it a two point two five. So that's a four point five. I know there's not many down this low. Yes, Pootie Tang. It is at four point five, and there's only one other movie we've discussed that hits the four point five ranking. Okay. Can you guess what movie it is? Ooh. It'll take too long to guess. It's Mike Tolan's Radio from two thousand three. Oh. <laughs> okay. Which is also probably one of the higher ranked of the challenging performances for everybody. Uh, category that we did uh, yeah. last November in which we discussed several movies in which the lead has intellectual disabilities an actor playing someone with intellectual disabilities mm-hmm. not not actors with actual intellectual disabilities which yeah. are a thing though they are out there absolutely but yes Pooty Tang is at least as good as Mike Tolan's radio starring Cuba Gooding Jr. if not better it's up to you I actually think radio is kind of um underrated yeah i and because a many might think that it's the shittiest but no movies like i am sam the other sister that was way worse than radio we watched radio pretty early in that month before we knew what we were really getting into and yeah in retrospect it it was actually like a sweet movie it understood itself yes and i don't think the other ones did very well so that's it. Pootie Tang. We wish we could have gone higher, but there was some issues there. And uh, probably some uh, studio politics probably also dragged this down quite a bit. I imagine the editing room did not do this any favors. But there you go. Uh, check the show notes for links to other, other places to find us. We got a new link to our uh, website where you can go look at past scores. But we'll only update it like once a week. So... You might not miss that. You might miss things. You might get previews of discussions depending on 
how we do not it. To, but... We're not going <laughs> to take it too seriously. The scores are not meant to be taken seriously. We no. change them all the time. Uh, probably won't change this one, though. But, yeah, just check in to see what we've rated other discussions, or at least as a catalog of what we've discussed. That's kind of what it's the most helpful yeah. for. So, like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment, correction. What do you think of this movie? I know I'm, I'm at that age where a lot of us in my age group watched this when we mm-hmm. were younger in college. Kind of one of those stoner comedies. So this does have a soft spot for a lot of people, you mm-hmm. know. What are your thoughts on Pootie Tang, if you'd like to share them? I, I'm not going to argue with anybody. You can think whatever you want, just like I can, right? All right. I'm kind of meandering. Let's get the fuck out of here. Justice for Ishtar. I feel you all on me, baby. Got you, got you, baby, baby. Jimmy, nah, 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 nah. Jimmy, nah, 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 yeah, yeah. Leap of time on my clemencies. Pen of time on my game of canes. I'm a cry to poo stuff. Oh, I'm a cry to poo stuff.